Casey was back in court today, her attorney waiving her right to a speedy trial, which is now set to begin in March. Crucial to that case, the timeline. And that's what investigative reporter Tony Pipiton has been piecing together since Kaylee was first reported missing nearly five months ago. Yeah, and that timeline is even making more sense, as you'll see in a moment. Remember, it was nearly six months ago on June 16th that Kaylee was last seen alive. And what we can show you tonight is how Casey moved about in the area where the body was found in the days after that disappearance. To track Casey Anthony, we followed her constant companion, her cell phone, beginning on Monday, June 16th, the day Father George Anthony says he last saw his daughter and granddaughter together. Ten minutes to one that afternoon on the 16th is when I actually saw Casey and Kaylee together. And they're both leaving with backpacks. And so my daughter said she was going to work, and she was taking Kaylee to the to the nanny to the babysitter. Of course, there was no babysitter. And seven hours later, at 7.54 p.m., Casey wound up running a movie at this blockbuster with boyfriend Tony Lazaro. Kaylee, nowhere to be seen. After spending the night with Lazaro, she returned to the family home on Tuesday, June 17th, around 2.30 that afternoon, heading north back toward her boyfriend less than three hours later. But remember, June 17th was one day after Kaylee was last seen alive, and investigators believe was likely killed. Scientific evidence suggests the human remains that decomposed in the trunk of Casey's car was there for up to two and a half days after death. That would mean if Kaylee died Monday, June 16th, investigators may want to focus more on Wednesday, June 18th to Thursday, June 19th. Well, Wednesday, June 18th was the day her parents' neighbor would later say Casey borrowed a shovel and in what another neighbor said was an unusual move, backed her car into the garage. Cell ping show she was at or near her parents' home from around 2.30 to 3.30 that Wednesday afternoon. Then her phone pings an unusual spot here along the Econ Trail south of Lake Underhill. And what lies between that tower and her parents' home? The now sealed off crime scene, the area where the body believed to be Kaylee's was found today. Casey's phone returns to near her boyfriend's apartment and goes silent at 6.57 p.m. that Wednesday, June 18th and does not ping another cell tower until 8.32 a.m. Thursday the 19th, also near Lazaro's. Where she was during all or part of those 13 and a half hours is anyone's guess, except Casey's. Now, the cell phone records we used for this report were among thousands of pages of documents that we, we requested, records that became public when the state turned them over to the defense. And all of that will be very important to the trial. It is. In fact, a little later in our newscast, we're going to present this evidence to our team of legal experts that we've been using to see exactly how this and some other things are going to fit into the trial strategy. All right. We'll look forward to that. We'll see you then, Tony. Okay. And the case against Casey will be back in court tomorrow. An emergency motion has been filed by the defense to preserve and inspect evidence and to participate in forensic testing after today's developments. Casey will not be at the hearing, just the attorneys involved. Local 6 will be there. You can watch the hearing live on local6.com.